Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Today I have with me Professor R Vaidyanathan, and we are going to listen to him talk about his experiences of working with Shinzo Abe, and also how um, Abenomics shaped the uh, country of Japan, and also how he was influential in making the world look at China differently. So let's welcome. With a good professor, Professor Abi, Namaskaram and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskaram. Always delighted to address uh, P Guru's audience because I always maintain that they are very erudite and uh, give some good uh, comments and other thing also. And uh, usual thing you have not mentioned, asking them to subscribe, like, for, share, uh, like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Especially correct. this one, you want to like it because you may have already seen the Elmer UN video that I put out yesterday on a totally different view of what happened and what who could be the country behind the assassination of uh, Shinzo Abe. Now let us take a look at Abenomics from a finance professor's point of view. What was his contribution, sir? Go ahead, sir. Yeah, no, it was very, it was very really tragic and. Uh, mostly what one can call even unbelievable because uh, last year statistics in Japan says only nine people were hurt due to use of guns. Single digit nine for the whole country. It's not known for any use of uh, this uh, thing and uh, laws are very rigorous. It's not very, it's not uh, what um, I can uh, use the word, it's not as simple as in US or any other place. So, the and this has come as a shock and uh, there is uh, no comparison at all in terms of a PM, ex-PM being. It's something like Rajiv, what happened to Rajiv Gandhi except in a you know different context and different type of situation. And he is uh, highly respected by even opposition people and highly regarded as a what you may loosely call a thinking politician. He is considered as a statesman, even when he was alive. It's not because he is dead and people are pricing another thing. He was the Prime Minister between 2006 and 2007, as well as 12 and 20. In 7, he left due to his uh, health problem, ulcer and other thing. And 20 also, unfortunately, has to leave colitis, ulcer and uh, complications. He was a very he was the Prime Minister as well as the leader of the Liberal uh, Democratic Party and uh, he was a very, what one can call, uh, uh, enthusiastic uh, person in terms of uh, foreign policy. First Prime Minister, of Japan was always considered to be more inward looking in the sense it was not very concerned but he altered the many, very many things. Most important is 2015, he brought about the changes in the uh, defense uh, aspects of uh, Japanese uh, policy. Till then it always used to be uh, very what one can call concerned and uh, very much restricted in terms of its defense uh, affairs. Second is uh, he also conceived as early as 2007 this uh, quad in terms of uh, having a relationship with Australia, uh, India and uh, uh, US. 2007 we are talking about and he was a very active foreign policy, he was one of the most active foreign policy persons and he was very friendly to India. That is something very, very important. The reason is, he is one of the few politicians who understood the reason of uh, not uh, economics alone, culture and economics, how they go together. How the countries which are culturally uh, associated with each other in the Asian region can cooperate. He even wanted to have China, but uh, there were other issues in terms of being not, not being a democracy and other thing. Otherwise, he was uh, very much uh, wanting to have good relationship. When he took over, very interesting, uh, some of you may or may not remember about uh, the Algerian uh, crisis, wherein a significant number, I think uh, 12 or 15 uh, Japanese uh, technicians are involved. Uh, this, uh, they went and uh, they... Uh, Jihadis went and uh, captured the mines and uh, tried to, you know, uh, what one can call blackmail in Algeria. And it had a, you know, 
the mines had this uh, multiplicity of uh, uh, countries and uh, uh, people and other thing and that was a very major crisis that uh, made him really uh, uh, think about what is the role of japan in the global affairs japan is companies are expanding all over the world and japan is also having other you know age uh, related crisis and other thing inverted pyramid japan is is becoming every census they conduct and then they say that we are 5 lakh less 6 lakh less and other thing it's not a growth rate declining the absolute numbers themselves are declining so i used to once uh, uh, always uh, tell them after 40 50 years it's an uh, japan is a uh, endangered species japanese they will be kept in a you know glass case in a museum and other thing people will come and say oh this is the japanese which used to be there because they are not very much enthusiastic about migration it's not very they don't uh, and they are not having a reproductive rate also uh, very high and it has declined it's uh, less than 1 hour and the women are not enthusiastic in getting married japanese companies are doing well don't confuse that with japanese society japanese companies are doing well all over the world actually some of the japanese products uh, somebody was mentioning to me india is the single largest uh, you know uh, output uh, capturing market for them not in japan it's more than japan actually india so corporates are doing well but not the country so demography is one of the major challenges faced by them second challenge is uh, i was mentioning about uh, japanese role in the global affairs in terms of because uh, post second world war they were enormously restricted in terms of their activity actually after he came in the second part of his tenure only he created the national security council till then uh, that was also they were sort of uh, us was providing an umbrella for them that's all so this is the and their relationship with uh, south korea as well as with uh, china has always had friction because uh, during the war japan was supposed to have been uh, you know used uh, what one can call south korean and uh, chinese women for as a uh, comfort women and other thing and also the japanese were you know extremely uh, what one can call brutal in terms of uh, treating these qualities so this is the picture but he was a man who uh i would rather say clearly understood the nature of linkages between civilization culture and economics in the contemporary world you may be surprised even before uh, modi became prime minister as early as 2009 10 uh, he was having a relationship with modi and he was following three people in his uh, twitter account i am talking about that time and uh, modi was one of them something you know remarkable actually he recognized that india has to be a good friend of us and uh, i do not know may some of you may recall in 2014 when uh, actually by then mms has not uh, left he was, he was still there the republic day he came he was the first uh, japanese leader to come to india to be a chief guest and uh, that was uh, recognized and uh, he had a extensive discussion that time with uh, uh, manmohan singh which continued later uh, after modi took over in between uh, around 2009 10 uh, vive this uh, uh, vivekananda international foundation was getting uh, active and uh, ajit dawal he was not at that time the national security advisor or he was just a retired ips officer he initiated a dialogue in ahmedabad along with uh, his gurumurthy who is the tukluk editor they were uh, very very great pioneers in this uh, alignment of uh, japanese issues there was a global foundation for civilizational harmony which was floated and uh, that conducted a couple of uh, seminars and uh, which had uh, our baba ramdev sri sri and uh, dalai lama and the japanese uh, buddhist monks so through the uh, japanese thing through the buddhist uh, route uh, there was a uh, method of uh, uh, what one can call trying to align with uh, some of the uh, 
cultures of Asia. And uh, Japan, uh, the uh, Abe quickly grasped this importance. So very interesting. As early as uh, 2014, of course, he took over uh, this uh, Narendra Modi. And uh, by then, between uh, you know, 2012 and 2014, Abe has uh, traveled to 49 countries. In other words, foreign uh, policy thing, he was not uh, trying to be a uh, conservative or something reserved or something like that. He explicitly indicated Japan is willing to do business with the world on its own terms. Actually, in 2013, he visited Buenos Aires for the uh, bidding the Olympic 2020. He spoke in English in order to establish it's one of the rarest of the rare occasion where normally, you know, the Japanese or Chinese leaders, when they go, they don't speak in any other language other than own uh, mother tongue. It is uh, translated simultaneously nowadays with the uh, technology. Otherwise, but he spoke in English in order to uh, emphasize the point that uh, Japan is. Uh, and so he created the, uh, what one can call the, uh, the base for the cultural exchange with India. Vivekananda International Foundation, um, I would rather give the major credit to Dawal and uh, uh, what one can call our friend S. Yes, Gurumurthy, along with, of course, so many other people, I cannot list the entire uh, thing, uh, assisted administratively, phenomenally assisted by the Anuttama Ganguly. This uh, thing was uh, there, uh, global. Two couple of conferences at Tokyo, couple of them at uh, uh, Delhi uh, were also organized. And uh, surprisingly and interestingly, this uh, uh, Buddhist monks uh, played a very, very major role in uh, participating in these uh, dialogues. So culture became a basis. So for instance, Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, so many countries, Indonesia, even though it is an Islamic uh, majority country, culturally they associate themselves with uh, uh, what one can call uh, India. They were Vietnam, similarly, somebody asked uh, who was your hero in fighting the American. The uh, uh, general told that uh, Lord Krishna. Very simple. He told that we learnt everything from Mahabharata. This is how we have to fight our enemy. So they have, could be different type in terms of religion, in terms of uh, other ideology, but the cultural roots are uh, to our Sanadana Dharma. So these countries were all uh, uh, clubbed together and then, uh, you know, these meetings were held. And Abe was very quick, for instance, a simple suggestion, I am just giving an example. Uh, Asia Pacific is uh, referred nowadays as Indo-Pacific. This suggestion was given and Abe immediately told, okay, no problem. He took it and in the next speech or next uh, gathering, he used the word uh, Indo-Pacific. So there was no what one can call uh, uh, hide and seek or anything about it. So culture as a root of uh, linking countries is a very, very interesting thing. Second is in terms of his, uh, you know, there was a, significant and of course there was always an issue of uh, growth rate in Japan and particularly when he left and then when he wanted to come back in 2014 election many people told that uh, this is going to be very tough and other thing he openly told if we don't get a majority I am not going to uh, I am not interested in forming the uh, thing and uh, we should get a significant majority they did get um, not overwhelming but they maintained their two-third thing at that time, there was a clamor for consumption tax and other. He postponed it. He told uh, Japanese society can benefit for some more time. And now is the time for us to increase our uh, uh, growth rate, increase our consumption. And as far as borrowing is concerned, Japan is very well known for its uh, significant amount of uh, borrowing and spending. But they are very frugal. In terms of where do they spend, that is another thing. And it has its own uh, complexities like uh, Greater Tokyo region has got a huge amount, a huge proportion of uh, 
their GDP and they have to sustain their farmers. This is another biggest, uh, if you if I can use the word racket, actually, because if they don't subsidize their farmers, if they import from countries like India and etc., you know, half of the price they can uh, uh, get the wheat and other things. But they deliberately wanted, and it's a very small group. It's not such a huge group or anything. It's not also political appeasement, but it is much more to do with their uh, uh, sense of uh, gratitude and sense of uh, uh, what one can call belonging. One may loosely call it. So that is another. So they keep uh, very absurd levels of uh, uh, subs, you know subsidy for the their agriculture front and other. The most important thing is. Uh, Abe was always uh, uh, what one can call uh, very sincere in terms of his relationship with India. He was uh, never having any uh, doubt about it. The Buddhist uh, roots, heritage and uh, even there in Japan, the Kamakura and so many other places, if you visit, you find uh, so many, so much of Indian influence in terms of uh, they have Lakshmi, they have Ganesh and uh, different names and uh, so he dipped into those uh, aspects of the cultural linkages with India. And uh, this is what I think we have to really understand today. We have to, you know, get the grasp of this in terms of our cultural roots. For instance, the current Sri Lankan crisis, which we may cover in some other discussion. Also, we have to realize the cultural roots of India with these countries is very strong. Nepal and other things. Instead of, you know, all these fads like, uh, you know, what one can call uh, this, uh, uh, you know, communism, capitalism are all, you know, passing. Now, what matters is the greatest aspects of culture and the civilizational roots. And uh, this is what is something very, very important. And the contemporary world uh, is facing this issue, actually. We have the uh, issue from the Middle East. And uh, Africa is having a huge war between the uh, what is uh, called the religion of peace and religion of love. You may loosely call it in terms of the among the three brothers. So this is something very, very critical for us to understand. And uh, so countries like Japan, even China later, I would say, even though the, you know, the what one can call the, you know, the, uh, four countries uh, which have uh, come together quad is uh, in terms of australia and uh, us us, you know, US and, uh, india and japan and uh, but there is a realization slowly coming that uh, china is not just the communist party for instance the you know some of you might have heard about it isukuni temple in uh, japan that's one of the most controversial place and our uh, uh, PM is elected, it is the closely observed whether he is going to visit the temple or not, or whether it can be uh, separate. Because the temple represents, in a sense, the oppressive region of uh, Japan to the other uh, two countries, South Korea and uh, China. But uh, he was not, he was nonchalant. He visited them and uh, there were a lot of criticism. But uh, later on, it became very muted criticism because he, even though he was uh, uh, going there, but he still had a, a strong uh, affinity towards cultural roots with all these countries. This is what I think is very, very important to know. And of course, the Japanese, the Chinese, the tension is uh, very well known. Unfortunately, Indian press doesn't even cover this, doesn't even know about it. For instance, significant number of the uh, labor class in uh, to Greater Tokyo is Chinese. And the slums are all occupied by them. And Japanese, unfortunately, you know, like every other country all over the world, including in India, many states and other things, the migrant labor who come to do work in the construction activity and other thing is, uh, you know, not, it's not given such uh, importance or anything. So Chinese are not uh, uh, treated as equal or they are not given citizenship or anything like this. So there is a, you know, uh, and uh, Japan, as I told you, demographically it is challenged. It's having a huge problem in terms of people. It doesn't have, and however you try to, you know, technologically improve your position, you require finally some people. For instance, a simple thing I will tell you, when I visited, I saw in some places, 
they don't have the manpower to clean the windows it's very costly very expensive and uh, some of the glass towers built uh, some 40 50 years before today uh, none to climb all of that and clean it actually because the insurance cost and the cost of doing it is phenomenal actually in india you uh, there is a glass tower you ask somebody to climb it and uh, if something happened, he goes he goes further up. That's all. Nothing more, nothing less. <laughs> no sad, sir. Huh? Sad, it's sir. I, I, I shouldn't have laughed. <laughs> that is the way in which uh, we, you know, because uh, we have a huge, uh, uh, what one can call, uh, population willing to do all these things. There, what they have done very interestingly, uh, there is a sensor is attached with the uh, wipers in the windows and various other places as much as uh, the dust uh, you know uh, so many inch three quarter of an inch the dust formation take place automatically the sensor begin to operate but uh, even that assuming you require some people to you know start the you know the process so it's not a very you know you can't completely 100 uh, percent depend only on technology for instance uh, even watching this uh, uh, garbage uh, sewerage pipes and other things so, you know sewerage pipes uh, for instance in many of the countries including india and there is some problem then there is a uh, then there is a what one can call you send somebody to inside the uh, tunnels and then uh, look at it and then clean it up another thing there uh, they have got a huge amount of cctv type of arrangement so all the uh, underground uh, drainage and other thing is continuously watched i used to the joke actually if these things have to be watched from india hyderabad or bangalore or some such place there would be enough people willing to watch the uh, drainage of uh, japan or germany and other thing that's one uh, additional area of income for our it sector anyhow they have as much as possible they are trying to uh, what one can call uh, automate uh, automize and other autom- automatic thing and robotics and but still they have a huge problem of people and currently much of the labor comes from china and uh, not other countries and other thing so the china conundrum is always there but in the medium term in the next five to ten years there is no alternative other than india china japan and south korea combining together having an axis along with Russia on the other side, the European and of course Israel has always been a good friend of these countries. They have been extraordinarily uh, agile and uh, alert and this is the only way forward. There is no other, the new global architecture can only come, let me repeat it and Abe also believed that but unfortunately he was not able to uh, bring around the China element into it. The new global architecture has to have India, China, Japan. This is the, this is the you know, in a very uh, loose term, it is the yellow and brown century. This has to be clearly understood by us. And the white century is over a long time before. And it is on a significant decline. There is no other, you know, UK is on... Uh, you know, it's, it used to be considered as a chick child of Europe. Once one more thing told this, and uh, then UK, I think it was May, uh, Theresa May or uh, uh, Cameroon, I don't know. One of them was very upset about it. Uh, one more thing told, it's a sick child of Europe. Now it is becoming a sick child of the world itself. The amount of uh, crisis and the problem. Anyhow, they are trying to figure out some uh, Indian origin man or a uh, Iraq oh origin or a Pakistan origin man, whether they can solve this. It's not going to be very easy. So, China, India and Japan uh, is going to be a major block. And uh, this will be the uh, future for this century. For the next 40, 50 years at least easily. This will carry us through. And uh, Abe was a extremely, uh, what one can call a pleasant host. And he had enormous amount of uh, uh, what one can call respect for India. And much more is, I do not know how, from 2007, he had so much amount of uh, uh, 
good will and respect for uh, our current prime minister even before he became prime minister i am talking about 2007 8 9 nobody would have thought in those days around 12 13 at least the people who are talking about he uh, getting projected as a pm in the election and other somehow you know maybe these are some chemistry which is not very easy to be uh, relatable in terms of uh, what one can call mathematics or arithmetic he was a uh, great friend of india it's a great loss to us and there were a lot of theories going around why he was assassinated another thing uh, and uh, any anyway, over a long period of time only we will uh, uh, come to know of it it's a uh, one thing is sure it's a lone assassin it's not some sort of a large uh, group which was participating in that or anything and it doesn't seem to be part of a, any jihadi type of a network because given his background in terms of the navy uh, training in the uh, japan then you know that f- will slowly come out what type of uh, issue another so we should uh, give our sincere uh, what one can call uh, obituaries condolences to and uh, is uh, we have lost i would rather say simply india has lost a great friend who understood the cultural uh, roots of economics very very important and uh, he always felt that uh, economics has to cannot function independently he didn't uh, you know give much uh, you know credit to most of these uh, uh, western models and other thing one size that doesn't fit all that was uh, he used to say we have to look at our own uh, background our own culture and that's something which uh, i think uh, he was very very uh, uh, enthusiastic and of course we should uh, fondly remember our own uh, little contribution in this by as i mentioned to you dawal and uh, guru murthy and other people in terms of shaping the relationship between india and uh, japan so this is something we will uh, have to wait and see one thing is uh, japan does have, even china does have an enormous amount of goodwill for india i think uh, we should be able to you know uh, leverage on it work on it and then uh, take it to the future unfortunately even though we say so much uh, uh, look east and other thing our uh, head is uh, turned to west only our head <laughs> like this our umbilical cords are tied to the west even today for instance some coconut uh, fellow comes from uh, us or uk and gives us uh, bashan on uh, indian economy we listen to it as if it's a great uh, thing uh, you know and it can be a plumber also sometime and later on it is told he is a plumber sir from us he has wrongly come to a you know he should go to the next uh, uh, auditorium where the global plumbing conference is taking place but we have come here and doesn't matter sir he is a white man so so the fundamental thing is uh, a white man can't tell lies one b if you have a tie you can tell a lie without any problem and uh, three we think that uh, you know uh, one size fits all and western solutions long time before discarded we still go on uh, discussing and debating for instance uh, leftist and rightist it doesn't have any more people somebody told me bjp is a rightist party i was laughing i told have you ever seen their economics or policies and socially they may be rightist economically definitely not they 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 openly told that gandhian socialism is their uh, uh, basis so there is a huge amount of churning is taking place in the world first point we should recognize that and in that churning what is the role of the white and yellow most important and what is the role of the brown and yellow most important brown yellow combination is going to be the combination for next 40 50 years with that uh, sobering thought let's uh, give om shanti to our good friend abe and then uh, uh, close the discussion thank you very much for your patient hearing thank you sir and uh, just a few thoughts about uh, the assassin's weapon it appears to have been something that could have been manufactured using a 3d printer because it is not a uh, normal kind of a gun and this person if you look at it from outside it looks like those you know tele zoom lens camera you know the camera which has a tele zoom lens yeah. so i think people mistook this fellow for a photographer and also unfortunately the first bullet 
may have uh, not killed him uh, but unfortunately what happened was you know how all these security people carry their suitcases yeah. that suitcase did not deploy that supposed to be an umbrella for uh, um, you know protection. Uh, protection and that did not deploy in time and therefore when and this is instinctive when you see a sound from the back he turned around so the sh second shot got him straight on the heart unfortunately and and many people are saying that you know this that but this is what it is the poor guy i mean the heart bled to death and uh, he also had crohn's disease which is a very very yeah. um, very difficult uh, thing to manage because what happens is you have to be always uh, you know ready to go to a toilet at a very short notice it, it's just very very difficult if you are the prime minister of a country and you have to sit on a meeting and and then suddenly your body tells you no 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 i need to go it's a how he managed for this long uh, was uh, amazing in itself and uh, last point is that japan japan's prime ministers tend to be uh, you know family oriented like for example shinzo abe's grandfather was a prime minister yeah yeah the prime ministers come from a small set of families so we have to wait and see hopefully this cultural affinity hopefully the next person will carry forward and and let's hope that we keep building on top of uh, Shinzo Abe's uh, foundations. But this uh, camera has a, a pistol. If you remember in Afghanistan, this took place. Actually, one of the uh, terrorists, actually, the uh, the leader, I'm just not uh, getting his name anyhow. Oh, uh, Masood, this, uh, Masood. Masood. Uh, he, was to, he was supposed to click a photo of him, go right. nearer. Uh, but actually, it was, uh, you know, it's not a camera. It was a same similar type of a thing yeah, correct, yeah. Correct, correct 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 yeah good uh, any questions please okay uh, infected 420 wants to know can it be can sri lanka be merged with india if people of sri lanka want no no it cannot be merged as of now global uh, situation maximum what can be done is uh, uh, if if sri lanka want it can have a long term trade, commerce and uh, defense agreement with India. It's some sort of uh, India can be an umbrella for Sri Lanka in terms of and the same currency can be. You see, 60 percent, 50 to 60 percent of its uh, revenue comes from tourism. And of that, again, a huge proportion is India only. So it's not. Uh, but uh, merger and other thing is not uh, in the current situation, not going to be very easy global situation. Abe did um, his work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It can't be reversed. It's a statement rather than a question. I agree with you. Right, 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 right. Next question, please. Is the Quad mature enough to take the mandate forward without Abe? No, Quad has got its own uh, limitations. Let's be very clear about it. Quad is not a statutory or any such. It doesn't have any. Basically, it is to provide some sort of an umbrella. And uh, it's supposed to contain China. That is what is not uh, uh, agreed to, and there are a lot of uh, you know differences which is uh, coming up within the Quad also. Uh, New Zealand, which is not a member of the Quad actually, <laughs> recently she told that uh, there uh, uh, that uh, this uh, invasion by Russia cannot be looked at as a black and white thing. We have to have nuances of. See, everyone has got their own uh, what one can call economic and uh, other type of requirements. So they are not going to fall into this type of a, so Australia has got a strong uh, linkages with uh, China and uh, US is also one of the major trading partner with uh, China. So it's not going to be very, uh, Quad will have its own uh, role, but not a very uh, major role as uh, many people are envisaging. Burping Lama wants to know, how is Japan's push for military self-sufficiency and counter to China going to play out without Abe? No, no, military self-sufficient, it can be in terms of some technology and other thing. See, in terms of infantry and other thing, uh, Japan is nowhere actually. Uh, number of uh, people and uh, can be only from the point of view of some uh, high technology and other. And, you know, countering China is not, a, you know, it's not an easy task. Let's be clear about China. More than 50% of the global manufacturing output, I'm not talking about value addition or GDP, 
output more than 50% of global manufacturing output comes from china today so you know they are now nearing 20 trillion us dollar within the next few years they will cross us actually become number one in nominal terms so i think you know we are 3 trillion wanting to become 5 trillion so and their you know forex resources are 7 trillion we are half a trillion so there is a, I think, uh, you know, people think that China is something like uh, Colombo or what one can call, which it is not actually. It's a, it's a huge thing and uh, it's not uh, again socialist or communist. It has a huge thriving, uh, what one can call, stock market, large number of companies, of course, companies uh, in which uh, the Politburo members also go and sit in order to watch. That is a separate, but uh, it has its own, uh, so it's not a, so this uh, starting with the containing China, most, uh, you know, uh, what one can call absurd type of thing. And Indian media, I tell you, doesn't have any independent way of doing anything. Indian media is nothing but recycling Reuters and uh, uh, Bloomberg, uh, New York Times and uh, Washington Post. Let me make it very clear. And from that, uh, the Tamil, Marathi and other media further recycles it. There is uh, no other. Uh, and, uh, Hindu in those days used to have correspondence, at least in Peking and uh, various other uh, locations. Hindu was the only paper, if I remember correctly, from India, which had a correspondent in Washington, which had a correspondent in Paris and... Uh, even now, I don't think so. They also don't. Uh, so this is just a Xerox copy of all this uh, thing. It doesn't work. So counter China, countering China and other things, forget about it. Ever move the word permanent from their military bases in Japan. They may not actually. China, America has got 123 locations, their military bases. And uh, so Japan is one of them where periodically people don't, uh, people are not happy about it. Uh, Guam is adjacent island, you know, which is a separate, it's a US uh, country actually, territory actually. And it will take some time. US is, you know, in a sense, US is withdrawing uh, from all over the world uh, uh, sphere now. <laughs> the biggest joke I read yesterday is US is seriously thinking of removing Afghanistan from being a major non NATO ally. Can you believe that? As of today morning, Afghanistan is a non-NATO ally of US. US is a tube light, it has become, I think. They should have removed it long time before. Anyhow, it's all right. Nothing. Their military bases can be there. It will be spent. Global polity, no. Not a greater, great impact or anything like that. This is a sort of a, is a one-off type of a assassination. But Japan is not going to go back or anything like that. Unless countries like us, we don't carry forward the good relationship nurtured. Right? Very and good. I think, I think that is the last question. Oh, there's one more. So, Sudhakar Rao wants to know, people are saying that because of Chinese loan that Sri Lanka became bankrupt. Is it real? No, not just because of Chinese loan. It is also because of Chinese, so many other loans also they have got. <laughs> Don't blame only on this uh, particular thing, right? The man, right. you know, uh, the man uh, will drink vodka and so the, it is not he drank vodka, he drank whiskey, he drank beer, he drank so many things. <laughs> so don't only blame the vodka for his uh, going into bankruptcy, right? We will try to cover Sri Lanka in another discussion. Chinese social media celebrating. No, no, these are, you know, would CCP would have considered as enemy? No, no. This is social media. In India also, some social media celebrate this, some social media, uh, you know, don't. Uh, social media means what? It has got, uh, you know, crores of uh, unregulated <laughs> barbarians inside that. It's a, you know, you, anyone can express any view, actually. You know, in Tamil social media, I was reading, there was one comment that uh, this Japanese uh, PM, uh, only in Japan, not in Delhi, like that it was there. What do you say for this? In Tamil social media, I am telling. 
this man is wondering why the indian pm is not uh, done like this so can that be a, and for that there were a lot of likes and all this stupid thing social media is a unregulated uh, what one can call uncensored free for all uh, booms uh, uh, rowdies uh, poor kids all sorts of fellows are there so don't go by that actually right some yes, of sir. course celebrated because they were angry with him for visiting i told you that asukuni uh, uh, shrine you know which is considered as a great crime symbol by the chinese and uh, south koreans the ad banner in a chinese store celebrated ebay's death with the milk tea buy one get one milk tea okay it's all right don't buy <laughs> all right so, thank you very much always people who will uh, you know when rajiv gandhi was murdered there were so many people who were you know sort of uh, who were feeling happy uh, they are not represented and uh, viewers uh, professor rv is going to give us a quick summary of how he is seeing sri lanka developing in the uh, next couple of days we'll air that and do stay tuned for that also i cannot emphasize this enough uh, we are sort of like the tip of the spear and in fact uh, to add to what professor rv said if the india's media in fact the world's media did its job we gurus would not have an audience the fact that you're all listening to us is because we are giving you a different perspective what you heard from professor rv may not be in the same angle or same viewpoint as what elmer yuan said yesterday at the same time we encourage both points you need to come to decision on what you think is right for you it doesn't matter the point here is to educate somebody to try and make them think critic develop the critical power of thinking so may I, may i request all of you to like our channel share and subscribe and also you can express your appreciation by clicking on the super thanks button and donate what you think it was worth for you to listen to this 30 odd minute talk of professor rv it came from the heart he has had one on one experience with uh, shinzo abe and 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 more importantly this cultural underpinning see very few people are looking at country to country relations based on the shared culture i have been to all the countries that uh, professor rv has mentioned china taiwan south korea japan everywhere they say he is from hindu he is from hindu the word hindu will be there something else will be added but i am always thought of as hindu that is the takeaway thank you very much professor arvi namaskar